Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to get into how to clean and lubricate your M1A or M14 rifles. So obviously an awesome rifle, but it's a little bit more complicated to maintain than say an AR-15 or AK-47. Um, there's a lot of controversy about this process, which I find kind of odd of, in terms of which grease to use, which lube to use and stuff like that. But what I'm going to show you is how I do it. And uh, basically how I do it is based on how the military taught me to do it. So what we're going to do is uh, take it apart, clean it, lubricate it, put it back together, and take you guys along for the ride. Before actually cleaning the gun, we're gonna go over what we're gonna use to do it. So it should, shouldn't take you more than what we have laid out here, but you never know. Uh, both of these containers contain break-free CLP, so it's a cleaner lubricant protectant, or some folks will say cleaner lubricant and preservative. Either way, uh, it's military spec stuff. Um, we have a fancy Walmart toothbrush. A little nylon brush here, which you really don't need, but we'll show you why you may want to use it here in just a second. This is actually, a, I believe, a Glock factory brush. Um, a punch of some sort, which you may or may not need. Again, it's a Glock punch. Um, we have this here, which is an Otis uh, rip cable or pull cable. These are, are fantastic and are really nice because they just won't harm your barrel, which is important for this particular gun, which we'll show you here in a second, and some cut-up t-shirts. Of course, if you want to use uh, patches, you can go ahead and do so. And we have some grease here, which the uh, M1 does like. This is actually uh, Mobile One synthetic grease. I've had very good luck with it uh, over the years. It meets a lot of military specs for grease, which is certainly good. Um, and the price is right. I got a tub of it, and it'll last you a lifetime. And uh, I think it's like eight bucks or ten bucks or something like that and you'll never have to buy it again but anyway now that we have that out of the way what we're going to do first is uh take the magazine out of course which we're going to hit our mag release right here and remove that these are 15 round springfield armory mags these came from a gun mag warehouse we'll put a link down below for those um for those looking for them because i know it comes with a 10 rounder we're going to pull it back make sure that the rifle is um not loaded and all ammo is removed from the area we hit the uh lock back button over here on the left. And now that we know that it's unloaded, we can let it go forward and begin the disassembly. Next step to get it apart is gonna to be to pull back on the trigger guard. The trigger guard has sort of a hook in there and you're just gonna pull back on this piece and up. So back and up, just like that. It comes free and you should be able to pull it straight up. Some rifles are gonna be tighter than others. So we're just gonna set that aside. And now if you take it and just kind of tap your stock it should start to separate the upper receiver from the stock. At this point, you can just kind of pull it out. Again, some of these stocks out there, guys, are gonna be a lot tighter uh, than this particular one is. So we'll set that off to the side. Now we're gonna take out our recoil spring and basically what you wanna do is this little piece here has to move over. So we're gonna take this portion and push it forward a little bit and that takes the pressure off of that. And you're just gonna grab that little nub and pull it over. Uh, at this point, you should be able to just pull it forward and up and out just like that um, so again what you got to do is make sure you push this little piece over in order to do that you just push forward on a little bit to relieve the tension now our uh, recoil spring looks like this and the little rod looks like this we'll set those aside and keep going for someone who's never done this before i will tell you that this is going to be the most frustrating part of the disassembly we're going to remove the uh, pop rod here and to do so it's kind of tricky and there's no like trick or tip i can tell you besides just using feel and even then i've done this a ton of times in my life and sometimes i still mess it up so what we're going to do here is pull the op rod back and one thing we want to make note of is this little notch right here in the receiver so uh, we're going to pull that back and as soon as the portion uh, like there's a little knob in there that we'll show you as soon as we get it out as soon as those things line up you're going to pull it sort of out and up and turn and again, I'll just fast forward this so you guys can see it, but uh, you got to line those two up. I assure you that's what we're doing. And then you're just going to twist sort of like this and up. And there you go. Pull it out like that. And the piece that we're trying to get to line up for the new guys with that little cutout right there is you're trying to get this lug that's on the op rod to line up. Those are the two you're getting and you're just pulling out and twisting up, out and up like that. Next, we're gonna remove the bolt and this part is a little bit easier than the part we just pulled off of the op rod. Um, it's a similar thing. We're just gonna pull it forward and then kind of turn 
and when I say turn, you're just going to kind of twist like this. Um, every gun's a little bit different. Some are tighter than others. And um, really, you just got to kind of find the sweet spot. And one thing I'll point out is that no amount of, like, brutal force will get it out. It's just kind of wiggling and getting it lined up right. Um, so do not, do not, do not try to force it. And there you go. It was that simple. I can tell you, though, if you guys are having a hard time with it, you're not alone. Uh, you just got to keep doing it until you get it right. For this video, that's as far as we're going to disassemble the bolt. Uh, you can take the bolt down further. However, this is just a regular maintenance video, so we're not going to do that, nor are we going to get into the gas system. I think some folks would probably want to know that. Uh, that's a little bit more advanced, and for normal routine cleaning, uh, Springfield does not recommend it. So that's uh, as long as this is moving freely, your little op rod's moving freely, uh, you're good to go on the gas system and no need to take it down, at least according to the manual. So we'll go with that. Um, the reason I mentioned the brush earlier is that um, some folks like to brush their bores out. So do you need to do that? In my opinion, no. Uh, but if you need to, they make special tools for it. But these little nine millimeter brushes do get in there pretty well. And the beauty of it is it's either going to be aluminum like this one and have the polymer tip like that. So it's not going to harm it at all, which is certainly good. There's no way to harm your barrel because it's aluminum and the barrel steel. Or I should say this is aluminum and the barrel steel. And the nylon ones are even better. But you can brush in there if you want to. Um, I personally don't see a huge need to do so. Um, but what we're going to do now is take a patch or a piece of t-shirt in this case. Spray some CLP on there. And uh, we are going to... Put on a t-shirt now this is sort of like the beauty of the otis cleaning rods you guys have seen these in lots of my our cleaning uh uh cleaning pieces that i can't think about right now the little cords jesus i couldn't think of the word sorry about that guys but the beauty of these versus like a cleaning rod per se is that with the grand style action you can't get a rod in there a lot of times and you have to clean from the muzzle back to the bore. So here we don't have to do that because we have the Otis cleaning rod. So we're just going to push it through there. Cleaning cable. That's the word I was looking for. You know, you'd think with me editing these, I would get these right, but sometimes nope. <laughs> so we're going to just push the cable through and kind of meet it here at the end. Uh, if you have a flash out of this is a lot easier because you don't have all these little holes to line up. But at the end, but there you go. So we're going to pull it through. And I'm going to let that sit. You guys can see, obviously, it's quite dirty. We're going to let that sit and let the uh, CLP do its job and break down some of that carbon. And we're going to clean up the rest of the rifle. We have a, a piece of T-shirt there with some CLP on it. We're just going to tackle the receiver. So there's going to be parts that you want to clean, like number one right in here where the uh, op rod rise. Now, it's going to be dirty because of, obviously, use as well as the fact that we, were, we put grease in there last time when we lubricated it. We'll show you that here in just a second, guys. So hang tight on that. We're going to do the exact same on the inside here. And uh, how, just how clean you guys want to get your rifles, I always leave that up to you. I'm going to show you where to get um, for the purposes of this video and let you guys decide on the level of detail that you want to go to. So in here, of course, we're just going to wipe down in there and we're going to do both sides of the receiver. Make sure we get all that clean. And one of the beauties of using CLP versus a specific cleaner type product is that CLP... Um, you can leave a little bit on there and that's actually going to help the rifle long term to prevent any rust or anything like that and also give a little bit of lubricant on there so that's the inside of the receiver right. next up guys we're going to spray some clp on a few parts here just number one is going to be the bolt that's the one that tends to be the dirtiest and have most caked on carbon we're going to use the toothbrush to clean that up and just kind of spread that all around make sure you get in the face there and hit, hit the back of the firing pin I'm going to let that sit. Do the same here on the op rod. Or not the op rod, rather, the uh, recoil spring rod. And then the op rod. Just kind of loosen up all the carbon on there. If you need more CLP, you need more CLP. Then we're going to take our one of our rags. If you want to use a clean one, that's cool. It's probably the better idea. And then we're going to use one of our picks. This is a tipped-in polymer pick. If I didn't mention that in the intro, these things are like three or four bucks for a pack of three or four really good because they don't mar up the finish of your guns because they're just polymer we're just going to wipe everything out of there wipe down the outside and we're going to get the inside here in just a second as well we have a patch there with some clp on it and the uh, otis cable on there the beauty of that is you can just run it down the guide rod there and you can see it comes out carbon fouled and just keep doing that until it's clean 
at this point, I'm just going to kind of wipe down the piston up front, whatever we can get without breaking it down. Clean that out. Again, you just want to make sure that's moving freely. And then I'm just going to get into anywhere up under the stock. Make sure there's no dirt, debris in there. And again, putting a little bit of, coat of a light coat of CLP on there doesn't hurt anything either. So it's kind of getting all in there up under the barrel in the action. Now I'm going to take a dry patch with the uh, bolt that's been soaking in the CLP there and just kind of wipe up all the excess that we have. All the excess CLP. You can see it broke that carbon down there. And another reason I like these tipped in polymer picks is they get in the extractor. So I'll show you that here in a second. That's the extractor right there on your bolt. And you can take the patch and just kind of work under it. And again, because it's Palmer, you don't have to worry about it uh, damaging your bolt or anything like that. Now, I, I said we're not going to break down the bolt. You can take your little roller off here and clean up underneath there. And we'll just put that back on there. Also, any sort of excess CLP that's on the op rod. The last part we're going to pay attention to is just going to be the trigger group. Generally speaking, you can sort of just brush everything out. This one's not too bad. And one thing you want to do while you have it in there is uh, make sure you pull the trigger and drop the hammer, but hold it with your thumb so it doesn't slam forward. And we're going to release that there, like so. And that way you can get up underneath there. And then after that, just take a patch and sort of wipe down anything you got in there. Getting it sort of as clean as you want. Again, like I mentioned, I'll let you guys decide how spick and span you want to get these, but just work it in there. One of the beauties of the uh, M1 or M14 system is everything's gigantic. There's no little springs in there, so you don't have to worry about damaging stuff. Um, it's big, bulky, and steel. Now that everything's clean, we're just going to take a good old CLP uh, patch and run it through the barrel. Now, some of you guys will want to use bore cleaner and stuff like that. Um, if you want to, that's fine. Um, again, though, I generally, unless you're firing thousands of rounds through the gun, I don't really see much advantage of that. And actually, some folks out there may argue that you'd see a disadvantage in accuracy to that, which I would probably say is more likely than seeing an advantage, I guess we could say. But yeah, so you're just going to keep pulling the patch through now that it's had some time to sit. And uh, if you want to use one that doesn't have any CLP on it, you can go ahead and do that now. And uh, basically, you just want it to come out clean, so just keep doing that. You can put new patches through every time or kind of reuse them. Up to you, your call. But that's what we're going to do until the barrel's as clean as you want it to be. Hopefully, everybody's ready for some controversy. Now we're going to go over lubricating the rifle. So I am a fan of a mixture of grease and CLP. Um, some folks say only grease. It should be noted that in the M14 manual, the USGI type manual, it does recommend lithium-based grease, which is what we have here. And it also says that in a emergency, you can use CLP, but when you get grease, use grease. That's what it says. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. So this little ejector here has a pretty good way of letting sort of a small amount out. You don't want to put much more than a thin coat. If you guys don't have one of these, what I recommend doing is taking a Q-tip, dipping it in the grease, and then rubbing it on with that. So a thin coat is going to go in there. We're also going to put a thin coat on the inside rails here of the receiver. Exactly kind of what we just did. Just a thin coat. Also right here, where the uh, bolt locks up, just put a little bit on there. You can kind of work that around there with your finger if you need to, and a little bit here where it locks up on the right side of the receiver. Now, um, I'm a big fan of also putting a light coat of grease right here. Again, light coat, guys, if you have a, a bunch sitting on there, it's just gonna get sort of thrown around uh, when you fire and come out and hit you in the face. So that's not pleasant. So, uh, there's that next we'll go to the op rod. Next up on the op rod, we're going to grease the points that have contact. So those are generally going to be the lug right here. And then this inside surface. So pretty simple stuff, just apply grease where you see where, but if you have a new gun, you won't know what to do. So that's why this video is here. <laughs> so again, thin coat of grease there on each. Now on the uh, bolt, I recommend taking the roller off and then putting some grease in there. Kind of like that. Just like that. And we'll put the roller in there. And then the same sort of thing, wherever you see where and the finish is coming off, uh, that's where you want to put grease. So sort of on the outside here, as it comes in the outside of your bolt, the lugs, 
here on the rear, both points. There you go. And then you're going to see some wire here and a thin coat there on the bottom side of the bolt. And then also right here on the lugs on the outside. The last point we're going to hit with grease is going to be the uh, trigger shear, which is basically this little piece right in here. So I'm going to add some grease on there and I'm just going to take it and put it up on the back of the hammer as well. And then sort of up under there. So all these pieces do rub together. Now, while we have it apart, it's good to put a little bit of oil right there on the spring. That's again, CLP on there. And push the hammer down. And you can also see where the trigger rubs in. I just put a little bit of uh, CLP on there. I suppose you could use grease though. That would work just fine. Now with that set to the side, a couple other points we want to hit. Uh, first off, it's going to be our spring guide. We're just going to put a thin coat of CLP on there. And again, if you had to, you could use grease. I just prefer CLP here. The controversy will rage on in the comments section. I'm, I'm fully aware of that. Additionally, we're going to put oil down here on the op rod where it slides in and out. And actually this rifle, for some reason, has less wear than most rifles at this point of their life have. I'm not sure if that's just a good fitter what's going on there, but either way, that's a good thing. I'm not mad about it. And then on the little ring here, we're going to put a coat of oil, just a, a drop all the way around to lubricate that. And that should be it. Now it's time to reassemble the rifle. I'm going to do it without cursing because I have a family friendly YouTube channel, but you guys can insert curse words wherever you want to. Um, but we're going to do that. We're going to put our bolt in first. It kind of goes in the exact opposite of the way we took it out. So you kind of just got to get the angle right and then just work it in the receiver. You'll see the little slot that it goes in. That's kind of where you want it. So let me get that ring on there. It's probably easier if you're not doing it on a YouTube channel, but with a camera angle to worry about. But we're just gonna work that in there. There you go. And once it's on, we're gonna get it to our rearmost position. Now for everybody's favorite part, the op rod. So a couple of things I want to point out here before I actually stick it in. So this recess here in the op rod is what the actual roller here on your uh, bolt rides in. So you want to be mindful of that here in just a second. And then of course this lug is what interfaces with that little cutout there in the receiver. So um, that'll come into play here in just a second. So we're going to put our op rod through the hole down here in the receiver. And at this point, we're going to rotate it over um, back into the channel like that. We're going to move it back so that the lug uh, goes into the cutout and receiver. But you also want to make sure that you pull sort of up on it. So that way it goes around the roller and allows that to go into place like that. Now we're going to line that up and then push down. It's important to push down. That seats it in the uh, receiver there. Let's see if I did that actually correctly. There you go. It should be able to move forward and back freely. Next up, we're gonna put our guide rod and spring through the uh, op rod. So we'll put that in there. I'll line the uh, spring up through the inside of the op rod. And then one thing that kind of stinks about having the scope on there while we do this is that it's not balanced. If you don't have a scope on there, it's very balanced uh, and very sort of easy to do. You can just push down on it, but we're gonna push that home. Just kind of work that in till it slides in like that. Now you can't push over yet. What you have to do is push this forward, the rod forward towards the muzzle and then push over like that and like that. Now we're reassembled. Now we're gonna put the action into the stock. So uh, it's uh, always gonna vary a little bit depending on variance. Like you have the scout here, but it's all gonna be the same. We're gonna push the stock up under the lip here. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do like that. And then should be able to line up and push the stock back up into the action like that. Next, we're going to insert our trigger group. Now, um, it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, but the big thing here is that this little groove, you want to make sure it lines up with the groove here in your receiver. Um, that way it'll be properly aligned. So we'll do that here. Let's see if we can get that on camera. If not, I just told you guys what to do. I think you can figure it out. It's always a little difficult to get lined up on camera though. There you go. Now all we have to do is just close this down and get it locked into place. You're just gonna pull back on the back of the trigger a little bit and lock it in. Just like that. 
With the rifle assembled, we're gonna do a quick functions check. We're gonna run the action all the way to the rear, let it go. And now we're gonna pull the trigger, hold the trigger to the rear, run the action again, let the trigger out. You should hear and feel a click. You do. And then we're gonna put it on safe, pull the trigger, nothing should happen. That's it. Proper functions check, the rifle functions, it's back together, it's working, it's good to go, it's cleaned and lubricated. Uh, thanks for uh, watching guys, hopefully we learned something, uh, at least how I do it. If you guys have any questions about the process or anything like that, post down below in the comments section. You can also post those questions and comments over at my Facebook page as always. For those of you that are new, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, at least if you found the video informative anyway. But thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you in the next video.